Okay. All right, cool. Um, now, this equation where we had expectation value of P, so I'm going to make a comment. Now, this equation uh, so this I wrote as psi, then I can write this as P hat of psi. But if I take the Fourier transform of these guys, then you can find, you can show, it's uh, very easy to show. You can express this as a star of P times the function P a of p. Okay, so this is what it means to express this operator in the momentum basis. And then this guy, we can write this as d of p, d of p prime, a star of p, p delta p minus p prime, a of p prime. And therefore, the momentum operator in the momentum basis, P, P prime, would be given by the number P delta of P minus P prime. Okay. All right, so, so before we, you know, carry on, uh, you know, so the way I'm developing the machinery right now is that whatever I think is natural to me, uh, at, you know, I'm just, you know, following my nose and developing this machinery. And it might just seem a bit scattered, and that's uh, intentionally so. What I will do is that once I have developed all the machinery of quantum mechanics, I will take a, we will take a step back and we will formalize everything in one or two lectures, okay? Right now, we are just like taking steps, you know, making sure that it makes sense some, in some heuristic fashion. Okay, so uh, the next thing I wanted to discuss is the eigenvalues, or uh, let's just say, eigenvalues of operators and uh, self-adjoint operators. So, so far, you know, we have said that we, we found certain observable and these observables have been positioned and momentum, and by extension, uh, energy. But there is a common theme that is running through all these operators. They have, they share a certain mathematical, um, you know, they share a certain mathematical property. So I want to get to that. So let's take a step back and, you know, talk about in a probability, suppose that you in probability theory, in probability theory, you know, nothing very uh, fancy. I, I suppose we have X is a random variable. And X takes values uh, from a set. And the values are X size. And x size are like x1, x2, dot, dot, uh, xn. OK? And each of these random values occur with momentum pi, which is also you know, drawn from some set. Uh, it's kind of a, you know, like this. Of course, they add up to 1. Now, if I ask you what is expectation value of X, uh, the definition 
is that you take all the random variables, the, the, sorry, the, the values of the rand, random variable, and you do a weighted sum with their probability, right? So this is basically what it means for something to be an average, right? So we all know what this, uh, uh, you know, this definition of average is. So here, but what happens in quantum mechanics? So in quantum mechanics, the role of the probability according to Born is played by some wave function squared, right? So what is the role played by Xi? So Xi's are some of the, uh, you know, these are the, here it's the possible uh, values of the random variable. So, but one thing we, you know, if you are talking about, so, you know, if we are talking about say position, uh, momentum, etc. then, you know, these expectation values, you know, ha have to be real, right? So, of course, this thing is real. That means that whatever replaces this in quantum mechanics must be real too. So somehow, but but you see, uh, but uh, you know these operators, you know, don't really look real, right? So for example, position is real because it's just the position x, but momentum has i in it, right? So is this real? We don't know. So, so for inspiration, we again look to linear algebra. And in linear algebra, matrices are A, but you know, matrices are, so, so suppose A is a matrix, But a matrix is really not an invariant object, right? Because we can always do a similarity transformation on a matrix, and we can get to another matrix. Which is, for all effective purposes, the same as the original matrix, right? So matrices have certain invariant quantities attached to them something that characterizes them, right? So matrices have, uh, so the matrix, say, the matrix A has some characteristic or eigenvalues, right? So eigenvalues is just the German for characteristic values. So, so if you want real numbers out of a matrix, the most general matrix we can take is a Hermitian matrix. Okay, If A is Hermitian, if A is a uh, Hermitian matrix, that is, a dagger is A, you know, then its eigenvalues are real. Okay? So this is something you probably studied in your linear algebra course, right? Does everyone here know about this fact? Uh, I do. Yes, sir. Okay, right. So um, what is A dagger? A dagger is if I take a matrix, take its complex conjugate, and then transpose it, that is the definition of A dagger. And this is a condition that we impose on A. And this is 
if the matrix satisfies this, then we say A is Hermitian. Okay. Now we can also express this. So uh, I prepared a proof for that for the fact that its eigenvalue has to be real. But uh, do you want me to give you that proof here, or are you familiar with that proof? It just it's just a two minute proof, so it's no big deal. I can do it. I don't have a problem with it. Okay. Okay. So the idea is that suppose that psi is an Eigen vector of the matrix A with eigenvalue small a. So that means this is a column vector, and this is a uh, square matrix, and this in general it is a uh, is a scalar number, which is in general is is a complex number. So this is what we mean by an eigenvalue. A is an eigenvalue. Okay, now if I take the Hermitian conjugate of this, then I get psi dagger here, a dagger, psi dagger, but a is just a number, so it just gets complex conjugated. Of course, we can write, since a is just a number, we can write it on the left of psi dagger. <clears throat> now what we do is that we take this equation and we, uh, we take the inner product with psi dagger. then this is a number, this is a number. And we also take this equation, but this equation, because A is supposed to be Hermitian, A dagger is just A. And then we multiply this equation on the right by the psi, then this is a number, this is a number. If I subtract these two equa one equation from the other, see that the left hand side is zero and the right hand side is a minus a star psi dagger psi. Now if psi is non-zero, then psi dagger psi is non-zero. Okay. Psi dagger psi uh, sorry, psi dagger psi is in general greater or equal to zero with the equality holding when psi is zero, right? This is in true, but, uh, but psi if it is equal to zero, then this means that psi is zero, if and only if. So this is not zero by assumption because we are thinking of psi as a non-trivial eigenvector. That means this has to be zero. Otherwise, in other words, A has to be equal to A star. That means A is real, right? So therefore, a Hermitian matrix has real eigenvalues. Okay, so, so that's how we get um, real eigenvalues from a matrix is by uh, imposing that it's a, uh, it's Hermitian. So that means that we should be defining Hermitian operators. Okay, so uh, so before we define Hermitian operators, you know, let's you know extend you know the definition of inner product you know to say so onto all wave functions you know, and we can just do it by linearity so if i have two wave functions psi and phi then the inner product psi comma phi is defined to be d of x psi star of phi. Okay, so this is the definition of the inner product of psi and phi. And note that the inner psi itself has to be greater or equal to zero with 
of the equality holding if and only if psi is zero, right? Because if I put both, uh, because if I look at this, what is this? This is psi star of psi d of x. Now, if this is zero, that means that this, you know, uh, the integrand is pos positive, right? So if you're summing up all positive quantities and the sum is zero, that means all the integrands have to be zero, okay? But in general, if psi is not zero, then it gives me a positive definite inner product. Number two is that psi and phi, if I take its complex conjugate, I reverse the order. Okay, that's also obvious from this definition. Okay? Right, so just as You know, for matrices, we say a Hermitian matrix, uh, okay, just for matrices, uh, you know, the Hermitian conjugate, so the, taking the Hermitian conjugate is an operation, right? So the Hermitian conjugation of a matrix, what does it mean? If I take a matrix do its Hermitian conjugation, then its ijf component has is given by the star ji, right? This is the definition of Hermitian conjugation. So this inspires us to define uh, define the Hermitian conjugation of an operator is something whose xx prime element is given by that operator uh, taking the x prime x element and complex conjugating it, right? So this is what it means for an operator uh, to, uh, this is, uh, you know, taking the Hermitian Uh, conjugate. We have not imposed that the operator is Hermitian yet. Okay, so this is for matrix how we define Hermitian conjugation, but what is a Hermitian matrix? A Hermitian matrix is a matrix that is its own Hermitian conjugate, right? So that means that if I take a matrix so if I take a matrix, take its Hermitian conjugate, which is explicitly given by A star J i, then it's equal to the original matrix, which is A i J. So this condition is what we mean by Hermitian con by Hermitian matrix. So by analogy. For operators, we should have exactly O hat dagger, say, XX prime should be equal to O hat XX prime. This should be the definition of Hermitian um, for a Hermitian operator. Is this clear what I'm doing? I'm just doing analogy with matrices. 